Welcome to another comment Q&A, where I try to answer some of your questions in the comment section of our YouTube videos with these extended uh, type of videos. All right, so the first one is coming by Kitana, and the question is, what is the ideal timing for a post and core? Should it be done immediately or it should be delayed? Now, that's a really, really good question, and it comes up quite a bit. Now, there's several points of consideration here are the efficiency of doing one versus the other, what are the success considerations between the two, types of doing it delayed or immediately? What are some of the mechanisms, therefore, that lead to the success uh, considerations that we need to have in these particular cases? And then lastly, we're gonna to try to make a little conclusion here and find out what is the best way to do this immediately or should it be delayed? Now, obviously, in terms of the considerations for efficiency, it makes a lot more sense for both the patient and for us not to drag the patient back in to do the uh, post-placement and the placement of the core. What if we could just do the endo and immediately place the post and the core on that case, it would be ideal, obviously. So what are some of the uh, factors here involved that would prevent us from doing it in a single visit because a single visit is more efficient uh, right after the endo. Now, obviously, if we don't have enough time since making there's enough, some time is required to place the post and core after the root canal, if the patient has already been open, their mouth has been open after a long endodontic procedure, perhaps it would be better off for that patient to, for us to complete that visit and have the patient go home and come back at a, a follow-up visit where they can be at least a little bit rested, which of course means that it has to do with the level of complexity of the post-placement. If it is in a place that uh, still requires a lot of uh, involved post-preparation procedure. Now, when it comes to the post-preparation procedure, don't forget I did another video uh, for you guys many, many years ago where I talked about the Nase post-preparation technique, which was essentially possible only after the advent of bioceramics, which involved the preparation of the post base before the obturation so that you had a post space uh, kind of already ready. I link the uh, video for that over here. But one of the most important considerations here is the success considerations. Are we confident about the root canal we just finished? I mean, are we sure that this root that we're gonna place the post and the core is not going to require retreatment because there's nothing more difficult to remove than a freshly bonded or looted post into a canal. And then you're not gonna be able to remove that kind of a fresh bonded post that easily without putting the patient at strategic risk of fracture or weakening of that root. So you need to make that consideration at the time where you're making that decision. If you're not sure about the your ability to have completely cleaned out that, that root, if the case is simple, the root is straight and you already achieved full working length and you didn't have a large periapical infection associated with that tooth, you have large apical uh, diameter and you, you feel pretty confident about the case, well, why not? Why don't you place the post right at the same visit? But if you have a tooth where you had a large peripheral infection, you had difficulty achieving length, you're not very confident about the quality of the root canal and there's a chance it may have to be redone, then obviously you may wanna wait a little while, follow up with the patient, make sure all symptoms are resolved before you proceed with placing of the post. Which brings up another big point here as well, where you decide to do the cases in a single visit and place the post immediately, you need to look at the uh, surgical accessibility of that tooth. Can that tooth have apicoectomy should the tooth uh, fail, the root canal fail, and the infection is not adequately addressed, and you now no longer are able to uh, easily and successfully revise that root canal, can that tooth have an apicoectomy uh, easily? And if that is the case, then those are another one of those cases in which you possibly want to consider doing the uh, the post immediately. If you're having a your lower second molar, which is fairly close to the infraviolar nerve, very deep into the bone, and you've done your preparation, you've done the root canal, but there's a very large lesion associated with that tooth, perhaps placing the post immediately on a tooth like that may not be the best choice given the fact that if it fails, now revision of a tooth like that is not gonna be so easy. So success considerations are very important, but what are some of these mechanisms that lead to successful outcomes and what are these considerations that we're gonna to have to have? Well, one of the important things is first a decision between whether the post is gonna be bonded or if it's gonna be looted, if it's just gonna be cemented. Now, obviously when it's gonna be cemented, it's a little bit of a different kind of a consideration, but bonding, which is obviously the ideal way of uh, using your post when it's bonded, it actually is 
a little bit more strengthening for the root itself since it holds it together compared to merely looting it. So bonding is ideal, but in order to have proper bonding, you have to look at the considerations for the bond between the cemented using and the dentin surface inside the root canal. For example, if you are using a eugenol-based cement for your root canal therapy, ZOE-based cements, well, obviously the eugenol will have a delay factor for bonding because it's an oil and oils are gonna have a problem with any of these bonding situations. So in those kinds of cases, it's probably recommended to wait because this waiting period will hopefully uh, remove and uh, kind of uh, neutralize the effect of the eugenol in the dental tubules that have been placed in the post base. But if you are using a hydrophilic base cement, then it's gonna be a little bit different. And that actually leads to the uh, another question from the Q&A that I come up in, in the comments. And that question is, can I place the post with BC sealer in the same visit? And that's another great question here by Dr. Rasha. And this is obviously related to this question. And it tells us that yes, you can bond the post in the canal in the same visit using BC sealer, but you have to make sure that the onset sealer has been removed, which basically means that you have to make sure that you are using your ultrasonic in the coronal portion of the root to clean out the cement after your obturation is done. Remember, if you're using that NSA post technique, you're preparing the post space immediately with the cone. And therefore, you, especially with the BC sealer, and therefore all you have to deal with is the remnants of the, uh, uh, of the sealer on the canal wall, which you can easily remove with the use of ultrasonics and water without making, without touching the gutta percha in the apical portion of the canal with your ultrasonic tip, that's very important. So as long as you've removed the BC sealer that's on set from the tubules and in the coronal portion of the canal, and especially if you're using your resin modified glass ionomer cement, such as the BC uh, kind of liner, which by the way, it can be used as a cement for your posts, you are going to be able to actually uh, have a good interaction there with the cement and the potential any BC seal that may be in the in the canal. So the many advantages for placing your post immediately inside the root canal are first and foremost your familiarity with the canal right after the root canal has been finished. You already know what it is. You've already prepared the uh, the post space uh, in there. Now if you are not going to use an assay post technique, which in involves the segmenting of the apical portion of the gutta percha, and you cement the whole thing, and you want to prepare and place the post uh, by uh, using a, a burr or a post drill, you could still do that as well, obviously making sure that you have fairly good tuck back, so the gutta percha as well in uh, kind of condensed. Use your heat plugger to remove the uh, coronal portion of the gutta percha, just the same way you'd be doing vertical condensation. Then use your post drill to prepare the space into that space. Now, uh, another advantage of placing the post immediately after the root canal is the fact that you still have the rubber dam on. And there's been studies done, actually, the study done here in, within the past 10 years at uh, Tufts University here in Boston that showed that you actually do get a much higher success rate if your posts are placed under a rubber dam than if you place the post without a rubber dam. And that makes a lot of sense because posts obviously are root canal obturation materials. And therefore, it is very conceivable that a uh, post that has been obturated without a rubber dam can potentially cause leakage of saliva and fluids and breath that all contain different kinds of microbes into the root canal prior to the placement of the post and that could cause problems down the line. So placing your posts under a rubber dam isolation is going to help give you a much better success rate anyway because it reduces the chance of contamination. So we again discuss the potential uh, for surgical accessibility and your ability to manage the case if it fails, but ultimately what it comes down to as a conclusion is that it's always best to place the post immediately under a rubber dam whenever possible, but that is only regulated within your own personal confidence about the quality root canal you performed on that particular route and your ability to achieve a good successful outcome from it. And then if you feel confident that that route is going to do well, and in case it doesn't do well, it's surgically accessible, uh, especially in necrotic cases, because we know necrotic cases have a lower success rate than vital cases. And uh, therefore, in those types of situations, you can place the post, but you just have to be careful that you have cleaned the remnants of the cement on the canal walls adequately so that you do get a proper bond and you're going to have a good and successful outcomes. And that would be much more efficient for your patients. So 
it's a question of confidence, it's a question of good judgment, and it's a question of prudence and having a contingency plan to manage it, making sure you place your uh, posts under a rubber dam. And after that, uh, I'm sure you're going to get excellent outcomes. Don't forget to post any other interesting questions you have underneath these uh, posts. And don't forget to subscribe and like us and share the video if you like it and uh, follow us on social media as well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, let's save some tea.